we have previously looked at converting a transfer function to the canonical state variable model and we have seen that the modal canonical form provides us with very useful information about the dynamics of a system. Today we look at the problem of converting a state variable model to the modal canonical state variable model. To do this we can of course first convert the state variable model to a transfer function and then convert the transfer function to the modal canonical state variable model. However, we are going to directly convert a state variable model to the modal canonical form using an elegant method based on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. This method will also provide us with additional insight into the dynamics of a system. The problem we want to solve is to transform a state variable model to the modal canonical form by redefining the states according to the state transformation. We will only look at the case where the system has distinct real poles. In this case, the mu A matrix, capital lambda, is a diagonal matrix with the poles on the diagonal. The problem is therefore to find the transformation matrix P such that the new A matrix has the required form. The solution to this problem involves eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let's quickly review the relevant results from linear algebra. The eigenvalue problem is the following. Suppose we have a square matrix A and there is a scalar lambda and a non-zero vector V such that this equation holds. Then lambda is called an eigenvalue of matrix A and V is called an eigenvector of matrix A. An important fact to take note of is the following. Suppose lambda is an eigenvalue of A and V is the associated eigenvector. This equation will then be satisfied. If we multiply V on the left and the right with any non-zero scalar, then the equation will still be satisfied. A scaled eigenvector of A is therefore also an eigenvector. We can rewrite this equation by multiplying the identity matrix with V and then taking out the common factor V. Since the vector V is non-zero, the matrix lambda I minus A must be singular to give the zero result. And this will be the case if and only if the determinant of matrix lambda I minus A is equal to zero. An eigenvalue of A is therefore given by the solution to this equation. Now let's apply the eigenvalue and eigenvector concepts to our problem. Suppose matrix A is now the matrix A and given by the state variable model. Previously we have defined the characteristic equation as the determinant of SI minus A which is also written as delta of S equal to zero. The roots of the characteristic equation are the poles of the system. The characteristic equation is the same as this equation, whose roots are the eigenvalues of A. We can therefore conclude that the poles of a system and the eigenvalues of the system matrix A are equal. Looking back at our problem, we want the transform system to have a diagonal matrix with the poles or eigenvalues on the diagonal. The transformation matrix P that would give us this result is constructed by setting the columns of the P matrix equal to the eigenvectors associated with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. Before we derive this result, let's look at an example to illustrate the concepts. Suppose we have a second order system with the A matrix given as follows. We can now calculate the poles or eigenvalues of A by finding the roots of the characteristic equation given by the determinant of lambda I minus A equal to zero. After substituting the A matrix and calculating the determinant, we find that one pole is located at minus one and the other pole at minus two. Suppose we are now told that V1 equal to 1 and minus 1 is the eigenvector corresponding 
to lambda 1 equal to minus 1 and v2 equal to 1 and minus 2 is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 2 equal to minus 2. We can check whether these vectors are in fact eigenvectors by using the equation that eigenvalues and eigenvectors should satisfy. For the first eigenvector, a times v1 is equal to minus 1 and 1, which is the same as uh, lambda 1 times v1. For the second eigenvector, a times v2 is given by the vector minus 2 and 4, which is the same as lambda 2 times v2. We can therefore conclude that, that v1 and v2 are eigenvectors of the matrix A. Let's construct the transformation matrix P by inserting V1 as the first column and V2 as the second column. The transformed A matrix, capital lambda, is given by the inverse of P times A times P. The inverse of P is 1 over the determinant times the adjoint matrix. This is A and this is P. After multiplying out these uh, matrices, we get capital lambda as this matrix. Capital lambda is a diagonal matrix with the poles minus 1 and minus 2 on the diagonal and the transformed state variable model is therefore in the modal canonical form which is what we wanted. Let's now derive the result that the transformation matrix P that converts a state variable model to the modal canonical form consists of the eigenvectors of system matrix A. The transformed system matrix capital lambda should be a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. Lambda is calculated as the matrix product of the inverse of the transformation matrix, the original system matrix A, and, and the transformation matrix. By multiplying this equation with the transformation matrix, we get the following equation, which we call equation 1. Let's label the columns of the transformation matrix P as V1 to Vn, and at this stage we do not attach any special meaning to these columns. The next step is to write equation 1 in terms of this redefined P matrix. To see how, how to rewrite the left hand side of equation 1, let's look at the second order case. The matrix P consists of column vector V1 and V2 and it is multiplied with lambda which is a diagonal matrix with lambda 1 and lambda 2 on the diagonal. After multiplying P and lambda, we get the following matrix. In the first column, we take out the common factor lambda 1, and in the second column, we can take out the common factor lambda 2. It is now easy to see that the first column is lambda 1 times V1, and the second column is lambda 2 times V2. In the general case, the columns of the left-hand side of equation 1 follow the same pattern. For the right-hand side of equation 1, we multiply A with each of the columns of P, and we get the resulting columns as A times V1 and A times V2. In the general case, the columns of the right-hand side of equation 1 follow the same pattern. After comparing each column on the left-hand side with the corresponding column on the right-hand side, we can write down the following equation. This equation should hold for each column. We now recognize this equation as the eigenvector equation Vi must therefore be an eigenvector 
corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda i and the columns of the transformation matrix P should therefore be the eigenvectors of matrix A. We now know that the transformation matrix P should contain the eigenvectors of matrix A, but this requires us to calculate the eigenvectors. One could take the eigenvector equation and simultaneously solve a set of linear equations, but we are going to follow a different route. We only state the method here and we'll go through the derivation at a later stage. The method states that an eigenvector vi corresponding to an eigenvalue lambda i is given by any non-zero column of the adjoint of matrix lambda i times i minus a. To illustrate this method, let's return to our example. The matrix A is given by 0, 1, minus 2, minus 3, and we have earlier calculated the eigenvalues to be minus 1 and minus 2. Matrix lambda I minus A is given by this matrix, and its adjoint is given by this matrix. If we substitute the value for lambda 1 in the adjoint matrix, the first column is given by this vector and the second column is given by this vector. The one vector is a scalar multiple of the other and we can therefore choose any vector or a scalar, scalar multiple of a vector as the first eigenvector. If we substitute the value for lambda 2 in the adjoint matrix, we get both columns to be this vector which we choose as our second eigenvector. By calculating the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a state variable system matrix A and then constructing the transformation matrix P from the eigenvectors, we now have the ability to transform the state variable system to the modal canonical form.